My name is Steve Zimmerman. I'm president of Montserrat College of Art, and it's my privilege to welcome you to this annual event. We first always like to thank all the teachers who are here and all the parents for encouraging the creativity and the perseverance of the students whose work you see on the walls around you. There are over 23 schools and one homeschool student participating, the 97 students represented in the show. It's fabulous. We also want to thank our jurors. I thought that they had a very hard task this year, and I was kind of glad I didn't have to do it. Mm -hmm. and I would have, I would have, I don't know if I could have decided, but Bill Trays of Gloucester uh, was one of the jurors. He is a very established art collector, especially of Cape Ann art. He's a patron and he's an historian, a well-established historian of Cape Ann artists. And the other juror this year was Kathleen uh, Romanski, who is co-owner of the Mingo Gallery right here in downtown Beverly, and she's a Montserrat alum. So we're very pleased to have them help us with this very, very difficult task. This is the 19th year that Montserrat has held this event, and we are very pleased to do that. Not only do we appreciate the work of the parents and the teachers and the students, um, we appreciate the fact that people are making an investment in art. Art is, and this is my opportunity to, 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 uh, to editorialize, art is, is not just about making beautiful images or objects, and there's certainly a lot of those in this room, but it's about ideas, and it's about communicating those ideas. Unbeknownst to most people, almost everything that you buy most of your decisions in your lives are defined by design, by art. And I point out, you know, one of our students here has that spectacular bow tie. Oh, well, thank you. You know, <laughs> these things all work the same way. But why do we choose the ones we choose? They communicate something. They tell something, somebody something about us. Cars basically all work the same way. There might be some price issues, right? But we choose cars because they communicate a story that we're trying to tell. When we think about this little item that, you know, controls our lives these days, you know, the design that goes into this for you to make meaning out of that tiny screen is what artists do. They communicate visually. And all the students in this room, you all know it, make sense out of the world visually. And we appreciate that. The Massachusetts Cultural Council says that creative learning through the arts, humanities, and science is essential to a complete education. Newsweek magazine recently said that a recent poll of IBM, by IBM of 1,500 CEOs identified creativity as the number one leadership competency for the future. Nonprofit arts, humanities, and science organizations provide over 37,000 jobs statewide. In John's conditional, congressional district, right here in the sixth, there are over 2,400 arts-related businesses. They employ over, over 9,000 people right here in the sixth congressional district. Now, these awards, these congressional arts awards, are 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 are. Um, are held nationwide to recognize the quality of our art students. The winning piece from this exhibit will be sent to Washington to hang in the Capitol building for a year. Along with these awards from Congressman Tierney, Montserrat also offers scholarships to the award winners for our summer pre-college program, an intense three week, all day long, 10 hours a day of making art for students that are trying to improve their portfolios, or for students that are interested in art, going to art college but aren't sure yet. The grand prize winner uh, will receive a $1,200 uh, scholarship. The first prize, a $1,000 scholarship. Second and third prizes, $750 each. And the best of school and honorable mentions each receive scholarships of $500. If anybody's interested in that program, speak to Kathleen. And she'll tell you all about it. Now for the good part. John Tierney and these awards. Our congressman, my good friend John Tierney, is in his ninth term 
representing Massachusetts' 6th Congressional District. He's developed a national reputation as an effective legislator, fighting for America's working families. Ultimately, it is about values, and values are important. John proudly continues to serve as the only member for Massachusetts on the Committee on Education and Workforce, and serves on the Subcommittee on Higher Education, Lifelong Learning, Learning and Competitiveness, and Subcommittee on Health, Employment, Labor, and Pensions. In those roles, he has always fought for and defended the middle class, and we appreciate that mightily. He's a native of Salem, where he still lives. He attended Salem Public Schools, graduated from Salem State University, and earned his law degree from Suffolk. Until he took office in January of 97, he was a partner in the law firm of Terry Callis and Lucas, where he worked for over 20 years. Ladies and gentlemen, my very good friend and a good friend of higher education and of all of us in the 6th Congressional District, John Tierney. Thank you. Thank you, President Emmerman. What a great job he's done here at the college, uh, not just within the institution itself, but if you look at the entire community and how he's benefited from the growth of this college and the students and the teachers uh, and the, all the administrators and their involvement in Beverly and the greater Beverly area. So thank you. Dr. Ruben, for all that you've done on that. He's also opened up my eyes to a lot. I, unfortunately, not the creative one in my family that goes to my wife, Patrice, who can do just about anything in the artistic area. My greatest role in that is appreciate. <laughs> I can see as I do as I look around this room today, and I appreciate all the great work that people did. As, as uh, Dr. Ruben says, the creativity, uh, the, just the pure imagination that goes into this. We talked recently, he's always been great and reminding me that this is not just a school people are going to graduate and go out and paint and draw and sculpt, things of that nature. These people are going to go into other careers as well and bring their creativity and their imagination to bear. And it really stuck at home for me. About three weeks ago, I was with a group of technology company CEOs in the Burlington area. Uh, and they were talking about their business and the number of people that they wanted to hire. And when I asked them, what are you looking for? Does it have to be something that has a purely technical background? Because we have a lot of graduates that are out there looking for work that may not necessarily have con concentrated in the STEM field, science, technology, engineering, and math. And they said, no, actually, we'll take somebody that's graduated, and if they have a degree in something that's creative, and I said, like Montserrat, they said, it'd be perfect. Perfect for us to have students from that school who have that kind of creativity, the imagination, a likeness for technology, uh, and a good attitude. And they would take it from there. So I started to see all the things that Steve has said about what they're doing, graduating students here with the capability of doing so much more uh, than art. And I think art's quite a bit in and of itself. But what's happening here is great to see all these students, 97 different students participate, their families support them, their teachers get behind them. 24 different schools? 23 schools. 23 schools, one homeschooler, all doing it. It just shows how this program grows every single year. I'm always honored when we take the grand prize winner and put that piece down between the Cannon Building and the Capitol. There's a piece from every district in the country that participates and gets selected. If you come down and you visit, you get a chance to walk through that tunnel and see all those tremendous pieces of art that are there for the entire year. Uh, others, I'm sure, are going to be able to display their work somewhere else in the district, somewhere here on that. And all of them can, I think, proudly say that they participated in this program and were selected, showed their work, and then we have some lucky winners as well, which we're going to uh, announce right now. So my thanks uh, to Montserrat, uh, to Steve Emmerman, to Joe Lennox, uh, to all the folks that helped us, to our Claudia Neidhart, to Claudia, who did so much work in putting this forward. I want to thank her and give her a great announcement. Her hard work and the people in our office, we increased it by how many pieces from 64, was it? I think there was 64 last year. 68 last year, all the way to the 97 that we had this year and all the different participations. She has taken it on herself to make sure that everybody gets involved and we're growing it. I thank all of you for participating and congratulate all of our participants as well. And now, Joe, I think we're going to announce the winners and give out the certificates, right? Yeah. The third prize from Masconomic Regional High School, Alicia Quimby for Constantino. Congratulations. From Peabody Veterans Memorial High School, Jose Tejeda for Under the Water. First 
prize goes to Max Manfire from Beverly High School for his picture, City. And the grand prize is from Manchester Essex Regional High School, Riley McCarthy for Lost. And for all those artists who are here today who did not win awards, you've already won an award by being in the show. Your faculty selected you to be in the show, and that's why you're here today. We're so grateful for your participation. We hope you all have a wonderful career in the arts, and we hope we'll see you again next year at the same event. Thank you. Thank you.